I finally figured out how to synchronize the DK2's tracking camera with the LEDs on the headset um, and then subsequently I also figured out how to identify uh, the LEDs from the, from the camera video stream and the way that it works is really clever um, the LEDs as you can see here are blinking and they're not blinking randomly they are blinking out a 10-bit binary number uh, and they're just repeating going through the cycle over and over and over again and if you convert those binary numbers to decimal uh, then you get the, the values that I'm printing here so this LED for example has ID 525 this one has 860 and you get the idea now the thing is uh, that the software can track these LED identifiers uh, as I'm moving the headset around um, but then when I uh, when I cover them up it takes a little while to reacquire the number for that LED um, because the software has to see 10 frames at least in order to see all the 10 bits that make up a particular LED which is why they cycle through the existing numbers and also if I cover it up start from scratch again but otherwise as I'm moving this around um, you can see how the numbers 400, 522, 400, 522 how the numbers are uh, stable with the LEDs um, so now that we, uh, that we can associate LEDs uh, with, uh, I mean sorry, the images of LEDs in the video frame with numbers uh, and we already know the 3D positions of the LEDs from the from the DK2 firmware. Uh, we can now go and tackle the pose estimation problem, which is much much easier if you have a known association um, between your 2D image points and your 3D model points. Otherwise, it would be very hard to establish that association. But here, uh, it comes out of the out of the blinking pattern that we can directly observe. And there is some flakiness to it, as you can see, especially around the corners, because my software currently ignores LED blobs that are not circle-like in nature, uh, which is why these numbers here are flickering right now. The system doesn't quite recognize that as an LED intentionally, and now it does, uh, and now these things become stable. So once we have the model backing, uh, once we have the 3D model and the current pose backing the, the matching that we do purely on the 2D image space, uh, it should be much more stable um, to find a correspondence between between the LED points in the image and the 3D model points no matter how the headset is moving. So it's good progress.